imagine yourself being a nurse and you are tending to a patient who is hospitalized and the patient suddenly decides to confess to an alleged killing from 40 years ago. What in the world would you do with that information? It's Stacey Cole and Carol Hughes. What an incredible story. And do you think that if you were a nurse in there and it's 40 years ago, obviously the person's older, do you think maybe you'd go, is there some dementia here? It, you know, or sometimes when people get really sick, they get confused. If they have an infection or something, they can get some confusion. Would that maybe be what you would think first? Absolutely. And the other issue is this is the Mendota Mental Health Institute or institution. I don't quite recall the name of where this person is. So, and, and not to categorize anybody who might be in one of these facilities, but I, I wonder if you have to take it with a grain of salt. Right, right. Because you but would be yes, like dementia, confused. Yeah. Yeah, dementia, illness, all of those things. But why make such a confession if it isn't true, too? Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, and depending on how the story was told, I think there's times, you know, with dementia or mental illness or confusion or whatever it is, people could tell a story. It's not really making sense. There might have been details or there might have been sincerity. There might have been like, this person doesn't seem confused. This se this feels like a confession. Exactly. Ugh. Ugh. Well, the startling revelation unfolded when a patient in a Wisconsin hospital confessed to a nurse that he had committed a murder nearly four decades ago. At 8.01 p.m., a nurse at a local hospital contacted police to report that a patient told her he was the suspect in an unsolved murder case from nearly 40 years ago in another county. Officers relayed this information to the appropriate authorities. Now, the victim in this longstanding mystery is believed to be Terry Dalloway, a 24-year-old finance student at the University of Wisconsin who vanished on Valentine's Day back in 1985. A local news outlet interviewed the lead investigator, Scott Bierkos of the Vernon County Sheriff's Office, who has been dedicated to this case for the past 25 years. He acknowledged the patient's alleged confession, but stressed that more evidence is needed to proceed. He said, you have to corroborate the information that he or any individual where I'm able to link him to her death. He mentioned that the patient had connections as a farmer and a friend of the victim's fiance at the time, but did not provide further details or disclose the patient's identity. The specifics of what the hospital patient divulged to the nurse and the motive behind the alleged confession at this time remain undisclosed. Now, this case is, as people in Wisconsin know about it, uh, it was, you know, frightening. Somebody disappears basically without a trace and then is found later uh, just in horrific shape. It's, I believe, four days after her fiancé reported her disappearance, she was found decapitated <gasps> And no. her remains were charred. Oh, my God. Yeah. And she was with her dog. Her head and her dog were never recovered. No. I know. The oh, dog, my right? God. That's horrific. Yeah. Isn't it? So somewhere out there is a skull. I can't imagine what her family's ago. gone through. Yeah. Now, she had just returned home from her job as a bar manager on Valentine's Day, 1985, in La Crosse, Wisconsin, before vanishing, she left behind her purse and personal items, had no access to her car, and her dog was also missing, which we just talked about. Um, the notes also mentioned that Dalloway had confided in friends about her decision not to marry her fiancé, primarily due to his rumored gambling and potential drug issues, which had strained their relationship. Understandably. Mm-hmm. Despite the absence of any direct evidence pointing to her fiancé, DNA found on her remains did clear him as a suspect. The only significant piece of evidence was a paint chip from a vehicle discovered in a sheet wrapped around the victim. Now, nevertheless, investigators narrowed down the possibilities to a range of vehicles from various manufacturers. So this case, I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know if you can believe this patient. I don't know if the person's telling the truth, but absolutely worth checking into, isn't it? Well, the DNA found on her remains cleared him as a suspect. So hopefully there's still enough DNA that they yeah. could test 
to match him. And if they were able to match him in this DNA, case solved, right? Exactly. But the poor fiancé, I'm going to guess this DNA, four decades ago, you know, they probably didn't test the DNA for quite some time after this murder, would be my guess. Yeah, it sounds like they've recently tested it. And recently, I mean, like in the last decade or so, this detective has been working this case for 25 years. And I I saw an interview with him. He said that he checks in on this case daily. He's almost obsessed with it. So he wants it solved. And I'm going to guess that fiance this whole time, people have been like suspecting that he did it. They were engaged and then... She's not going to marry him. He's got gambling and drug issues. So, of course, he's the guy who did it. That's what everyone would think. until he's proven otherwise. You know, what's his life been like this whole time? You know, that would be a horrible... He's just got this shadow. Yeah, that would be a horrible thing to live with this whole time, you know. She did end up dead, even if the relationship wasn't going well and you're having all kinds of personal issues. That would have just... His whole life, he'd be living under this cloud of everybody around him suspecting he did this. Absolutely. And and somewhere out there is is this poor woman's head for some reason. That, I just, you know, every weird. time I go out hiking in the woods, it just makes me look around like, well, what's out here? You what's don't out know. here that I'm walking past? And for her family to get some of her remains back and knowing that her head was removed from her body and what tossed someplace kept as a trophy Mm -hmm. buried separately carried off by animals any number of things but my guess is he separated the head from the body so they couldn't identify the body as easily because of dental records maybe yeah you're probably right especially back then that's you know, 40 years ago, that is how you identified people. I mean, we've heard of, it, yeah, of cases where the, the hands are removed and the head, well, because that's how you identify people. We didn't have the DNA technology yeah. we've got now. And he burned the body. So yeah. that probably really compromised the fingerprints. Oh, that's just so tragic. But maybe at this point, he's lived with his guilt all these years and just was like, I don't know, maybe he's having issues in his own life and he's in some mental facility and it just came out. I don't know. But if it is true, I would love for that DNA to be matched to him and case closed just to give that family the closure they need. Absolutely. Let's hope that's the case. You're locked into the Hidden Killers podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers podcast dropping soon. Press subscribe now.